I want to ask because I thought this is kind of important to talk about um, because it needs to be said. So um, big up my um, Instagram friend called Natalie Petit, who I've kind of known, you know, from afar because of, you know, being out and about and being a bit, a bit of a loser that goes out to fucking clubs all the time. I was lucky enough to meet her and her boyfriend. Um, I'm going to say, is, is his name Martin? Is it Martin? I forgot his name. God forgive me. Um, if you are out there, I do apologize for not remembering your name. But I did meet her and her boyfriend one time when I was out. And then I obviously went to a party that she put on Unfold a few years ago. And they are very plugged into the Berlin techno scene. They do parties. They host things. She works in the industry as well, behind the scenes and shit. They're kind of, you know, the go-to people when it comes to techno and whatever it means out there. So the other day, she posted this thing on her Instagram um, regarding a very... Um, traumatic event that happened to her while she's working from what i can describe from what i can assert from what i can kind of read between the lines working at a club called um, watergate she didn't name it in the statement but she basically detailed um this experience that she had that wasn't the greatest and she kind of has now decided to set up a charity an ngo um that is basically going to be helping flinter which i think stands for female lesbian intersex trans um, I don't know what the A is for, people in nightlife in order to help them get on their feet or to support them in situations where they feel like they've been abused, harassed, wherever it may be in the nightlife industry, which is going to be pretty vital considering what she kind of detailed. So there's a clip about it where she kind of, you know, rounds, kind of gives a summary of what she's saying. And then there's also a statement that she prepared here at the back of these videos that kind of details exactly what happened. And I'm going to read it to you as well. But let's just quickly go through the video because I want to show you what she actually said in the video itself because this might give us an idea of where she's kind of going and then i'm going to obviously talk about a little bit about it as well because i think it's an important thing to discuss concerning everything that's going on right now in the techno scene hey guys so um i wanted to take this opportunity to be a little bit more vulnerable and open on social media and talk about a topic that's very very important to me and also about an incident that just occurred to me that I really needed to talk about. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Natalie and um, I've been working as a booker and event consultant, event producer and so on um, for four years in this industry. And well, I lived through a bunch of horrible incidents with my male colleagues and I never spoke out. I've been told that my career will be ruined and that I will never find a job again if I speak out or that I must have slept with someone to get where I am. And I never thought I could get brave enough and find the courage to speak out about what happened because I was too afraid myself and I was too afraid of the consequences and that my career might be over after I really say something. I gave these men the power over me and over what I can say. Also, a bunch of my other female and flinter friends and queer friends have, have been a subject to similar experiences and very, very bad, bad incidences with men. And they were also too afraid to speak out. So at the moment, we're all too afraid to say anything. And these men become more and more powerful. while we make us smaller and smaller until we're not there anymore. And after what happened to me a few weeks ago, I decided that enough is enough. And I won't give these men the power anymore. I really want to change something. So me and my friend Nini, we were working on a concept of an NGO to support women and Flinta people in need in the electronic music scene. If it's financial support, if it's psychological support, financial advisory, many things more. Well, I just wanted to say this was in the making and working on it. And no matter how, how bad the situation was that I was in, that you might want to read in the next, in the next few slides, 
I wanted to put this pain into action and really change something. And yeah, stay tuned. I would love for you guys to be part of it. And yeah, let me know. So the issue itself regarding what happened to her, because she wasn't really forthcoming in the video itself. She did look kind of, you know, scared. I guess somebody that kind of looked like she maybe had been crying um, maybe before making a video. So clearly something she wasn't comfortable saying aloud on video. But she did um, do us a favor by typing it all up and give us an idea of what is occurring behind the scenes. And again, from what I've been reading in the comments, it seems like this, this happened during her time working at Watergate. Watergate is one of the most I guess one of the other premier Berlin venues um, out there, except for fucking, um, what's it called? Except for, except for Bergheim. It's very iconic because of its design and because of the location. But unfortunately, in recent years, Watergate has now suddenly turned into like the fabric of Berlin. They have really shitty nights there, very commercial. It's a kind of a bit more of a laddie crowd around there. And in general, it's kind of fallen by the wayside, which is really unfortunate because the location is fucking beautiful, right? Right next to the river, um, overlooking the river, basically. Nice, amazing lounge type of area. The dance floor is fucking sensational. Look at this LED light system they've got, right? This row, this massive row of lights that go from one end to the other end. It's fucking stupendous. I think they've copied this design in other clubs as well. So it's a really iconic, um, impressive um, venue that is kind of a, a part of the mainstay kind of the part of the fabric over there in the techno scene in Berlin, especially historically from the people that have played there and have kind of come from the legendary parties that used to be there back in the day. I can think of one in particular called, I think it was like cookies and something like that, cookies and cream back in the day that I've, I've kind of went to. So it's a shame to see that it's kind of fallen by the wayside, but it's definitely not the same place it was anymore. It's now kind of like a fabric, essentially type of vibes. So she kind of detailed what exactly happened. So let's actually see here, courtesy of Instagram account, what occurred while she was working at Watergate, allegedly. Um, so this is the following. I started working at a very well-known Berlin club, continuing my career as a booker. Before I was hired at the club, I made great pro sorry, um, the club made great promises of changing and moving in a new diverse, um, inclusive and modern direction. In the past, the club had been known for bringing quite mainstream, having a mostly male slash touristy audience. Oopsie, that's me, right? I fall into two of those categories. That's a problem with techno scene, even though I'm technically a minority, even though I'm technically a, um, what's that thing called? Even though I'm technically, um, what's that what they called a poc right even though I'm technically a poc because i've got a dick i'm always going to be classed as in the male text so i'm always like a toxic male heteronormative cisgendered male and i'm also a tourist because i don't live there so duh, two bits i can't fucking shake right anyway continue um not having the best reputation but i was happy to be involved and propose changes and given my background of what i could bring to the table it seemed like a perfect fit cool so far so good i wasn't the only booker at the club there was another male booker in fact his person was who recommended me to be the bosses to the bosses he knew exactly what i stand for which party i'm known for working with and i came into the club under the given promises we'd be working as a team so again you can already see promises made probably promises not fulfilled the first few weeks everything was fine we were making some improvements we were working well together i outlined some plans and everyone seemed enthusiastic about the future changes i convinced um some of the queer parties that i've worked with closely over the years to also come to the club they were very well established queer parties that had been around for many years i presented them to these new opportunities at the time of change and how we could embark on this journey together and make a new safer space for the community now she's saying this i gather because i'm assuming some of these queer parties are very strict and very kind of um are very hesitant and resistant or very kind of skeptical about working with certain clubs because the potential to fuck up their whole thing is very high because if they decide to kind of get a bit i won't say money hungry but they decide to kind of maybe go for the bigger venue that sometimes a bigger venue that doesn't really understand their culture, doesn't understand their scene, doesn't understand what they stand for, could eventually kind of fuck up the entire vibe. And sometimes all it takes is one bad party, a very enthusiastic, you know, gregarious, um, engaged comment section, and suddenly your party's gone. So they have to be very protective of how they kind of put their party. So if they decide to put it in your place, they're trusting you, they're trusting you to give them control, to maybe understand where they're coming from, to have a, a you know, to maybe install a specific team to kind of handle some people and get whatever it may be but that's probably a big deal so you know you can imagine you know she probably took a big risk you know even recommending those clubs to, that club to the people there because it could eventually maybe even sully her name he continues i was beginning to feel at home but then the first weird situation occurred i was alone in the office with the owner of the club who's also the boss 
it's always a always a always a hard thing to fucking wrangle in it the male book and another male colleague so she's in the office with three guys uh, by herself which is you know is what it is i guess it's the industry unfortunately i think on the face of it they like to make it seem like it's inclusive and diversive and div and diverse but behind the scenes i'm assuming like supreme like how tremaine was complaining about supreme i'm guessing most of the electronic music scene is quite cisgendered white male type of thing that's probably it because they're probably the people who are, were around when you know in the infancy of the scene and they're still around now which is the only thing that i don't like about the scene i think these guys need to kind of make some space for new people but you know we'll speak about that another time um i was in the office with the owner um there was also the boss the male booker and another male colleague the owner of the club decided to joke about how the other male booker has had sex with every girl who's ever worked in the club right while i'm sitting there obviously this made me feel very uncomfortable and quite disgusted i was suddenly very conscious of the fact that i was the only full-time female employer in the office full of mostly straight men i started to question the intentions of why i was hired i had no intention of having sex with anyone at the club i tried to forget about this situation it was the start of me feeling not so good i'm aware now that this is sexual harassment and explains why it did not make me feel good now when i initially read this i was thinking to myself how is that sexual harassment if somebody says something again no matter how it, it, it could be vulgar but they say something not to you but just in your presence especially at work how could that be sexual harassment? But then I thought to myself, hold on. If my partner came back home and told me this story, I would go back to the office with a baseball bat. Do you know what I mean? I, without, even, without even a hint of hesitation, I would directly pull up to the office and just smack somebody over their head. Obviously, it might lead to a termination, but that would make me feel good. So I can understand if that would make me that angry, that if a woman is in that situation, working, you know, doing your thing on your laptop, trying to call, do organize your fucking thing, and you've got these guys around you trying to, like, you know, do dick measuring contests by talking aloud about how many girls are they fucked, like, it's going to impress you. I can imagine how it can make you feel, um, especially when you're the new girl there, and you're maybe look a certain way, or you're friendly with them. You can maybe almost almost think, oh, shit, were they being friendly with me because they thought I was going to fuck? What, did, did, did they think I was being too friendly because I went to fuck? Do they take? Do they think because I wear their certain clothes that I'm the... I can understand it can maybe feel weird. And I think in a work... Personally, for me, anyway, if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I think all work environments should fucking outlaw and should make it very clear in the contracts that there is to be no hanky-panky between staff members. I think that could eliminate so much. If all that stuff is taken off the table and you just treat your colleagues like colleagues and you could just do the work without any kind of idea that you might want to fuck somebody, I think it makes for a far better working place. I think the fact that that stuff always lingers in the air it kind of makes situations harder to kind of deal with especially in the nightlife scene where people are already intoxicated on drugs all this malarkey it kind of just makes it unnecessarily messy so i wish there was a scenario where you could completely outlaw it but i guess you can't really control what adults do when adults are doing what adults do and you can't really be around them to police them all the time but this is pretty awful i can imagine to be in that situation definitely 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 fucking awful it continues next page duh, duh, duh. Um, let's go. Let's, what's the next page? Let's go. Let's go. Next page. Can you go to the next page? There we go. So, uh, we did that. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. So, during the first few weeks, I was focused on our plan to change the club. I'd reached out to a bunch of new artists and agents to pitch them the plan changes. This is when the other booker told me I shouldn't even bother, as he tried and failed many times before to get these same artists. However, I'm confident in my abilities and managed to book most of the people I contacted after I pitched to them my plans. Good, good little humble brag there. Big up, Natalie bang bang when this happened something changed and from here on the mail booker started working against me i was in his eyes that he made it feel very uncomfortable like it took something away from him of course it didn't seem like it i'm just doing my job and i saw us as a team moving one direction this is where the bullying started he basically stopped communicating with me he'd piss he'd get pissed at me he'd snap at me it got to the point where he wouldn't speak to me at all and just gave me the silent treatment we'd sit at the same desk in silence if i was bringing something up to discuss he, he didn't like it he would just stop talking to me every time i got positive feedback or a compliment or a pat on the shoulder from another colleague or client he'd have to insert a negative comment to put me down or make me or make himself feel better some of other people and the staff members began to notice it and question why it was happening bearing in mind at this point i'm still quote unquote the new girl so i just let it go so this is just more evidence that she was definitely hired under false pretense. Even the guy who she says was her friend who kind of recommended her for the job, it's clear to see that he kind of got her on board 
as a way to maybe try and fuck. It's what it seems like, which is kind of fucking wild that he had this fucking long drawn out plan to get this girl a job and then get comfortable with that. Like, it's almost it's almost like a weird, what's that? It's almost like a cult thing. He kind of tried to isolate her away from her group, take her away from a quote unquote, her boy, take to, well, isolate her from her boyfriend, which is impossible because she fucking probably lives with the guy. But I'm guessing, um, take, isolate him, isolate her from her boyfriend, take her to another place, give her the job, make her feel like she's indebted to him and then obviously when that conversation happened around her about hey we want to fuck or we know we fucked every girl in the office she obviously made it clear that she didn't want to do that and then i guess that made all the other guys think oh she's a waste of time and then obviously he got angry that she's obviously a waste of time she's not going to quote unquote fuck and that she's doing her job well and she's killing it they kind of turned the girl on the cold shoulder and then this turned into workplace bullying because this feels more like this is like clearly a sign that that was probably sexual harassment because this is now turning into bullying this is now turning into bullying. This is now turning into fucking mental abuse. All this type of shit at the workplace where, you know, people are doing all these sort of like weird psychological games to you just because you didn't want to be the fucking, you know, the office slag. It's fucking horrendous to be fair. Let's continue. He then decided on his own to take over the whole calendar. He didn't leave me any real chance to have any influence or the other, um, any influence or other than what I had already bought in. He stopped discussing events with me, booked more and more parties that apply um, only to the old drinking men crowd, knowing it was against everything we planned and the Agreed. I love that term, old drinking men crowd. That's basically the challenge that all of these new um, queer LGBTQ focused raves are having to kind of battle against because most of the venues are owned by old drinking men crowds who service the old drinking men crowd. But you're now having to kind of battle against them, try to get those motherfuckers out because unfortunately they hold the keys to all the good venues or the only venues around. Sometimes they hold the keys to sometimes the infrastructure bits, right? Some of them own all of the main audiovisual companies you have to hire equipment from they're the ones that own some of the big booking agencies so you have to kind of interact with them in some way but they don't really click with what you're about so it's a hard situation to kind of remedy i think the only way to kind of sort it really which i'm thinking off the back of this is just to create your own thing kind of you know go fucking forget them and just build your own shit so almost like silicon valley style hey um we see a need in the world we see a want we're just going to make the thing and kind of let it go from there and we're not going to ask for permission we're just gonna ask for forgiveness that's what you have to do i'd imagine but again maybe it's easier said than done Let's continue. Let's continue. He stopped discussing events with me and booked more and more parties that apply to the old drinking men crowd, knowing it goes against everything that we've planned and agreed. Every time I would question it or want to discuss it, he'd make me feel ridiculous for even questioning it, saying that I would not know anything and that he knows the crowd of the club better than anyone. This is what they want, he said. This is despite the club was half empty most of the time. Do you know how criminal it is for a club that looks like this to be half empty? That is complete mismanagement of the people that own it. A club this beautiful in Watergate in Berlin, a club with all of these amazing views inside, both outside of the venue, to be half empty most weekends is a fucking travesty. This club should have lines around the fucking wazoo every single weekend. It should be the premier place to be. It should be maybe, there should be a situation where maybe this is the final boss of venues once you start making it in the fucking scene. This is where you kind of finally put your big, big party on to show that, yeah, this party is actually doing bits. But it's probably such a fucking toxic hellhole. It's got such a bad name around it that probably everybody in the Berlin scene knows to completely avoid it. I like it just architecturally and design wise because I've obviously, being a design school fucking graduate and shit, I obviously love this type of shit so i'm fucking in love with everything about it but i guess as a club as an institution but loads of people in berlin probably don't even go near it or don't touch it with a 10-foot barge pole so you have to give natalie a lot of credit for trying to you know bring this fucking behemoth of a club kicking and screaming into the 21st century but unfortunately the people that are there just don't give a fuck from what it seems like written in this statement it continues we were working in the completely opposite directions this is not the same colleague as i had in the beginning exactly because he wanted to fuck that's a thing it's annoying but this is the constant thing that uh, that happens in fucking nightlife i guess it's the drugs maybe it's the nightlife maybe it's just the fact that things happen after dark you know my parents always said nothing good happens after 9 p.m and unfortunately they're fucking right it really is the truth and it just is what it is unfortunately i think this guy wanted to fuck and that's why he got her the job i don't think he got the job because he actually believed in her abilities even though she's clearly good at her job based on what she said i think he clearly wanted to fuck and obviously she turned him down and then he turned into a little bitch boy let's continue there was no chance to discuss anything and it left me wondering why i'm here every idea i had no matter how simple or beneficial it would be for the club it was against and it would be immediately dismissed it without any justification and valid reason or argument next slide 
Um, eventually, the queer parties I brought in at the beginning began to have issues despite everyone being on board initially, then fitting perfectly with the plan changes. Everyone was super excited and these kind of events were coming to the club at first, but then all of a sudden it was decided that one of the biggest queer parties in Berlin doesn't quote unquote fit the vibe of the club. So he went behind my back, talked to all the other staff and made the decision to move it off the weekend slots. When I heard about this, I questioned him. He said, all the other long-standing members of the club agree my decision is final what am I supposed to say to this you don't even involve me in the discussion about the event that I brought here so they undermine her they icing her out this is textbook harassment abuse sort of behavior in the office right just because she decided not to be the office slag can you imagine you just want to do a good job put on fun events push the scene forward and eventually you know what was weird about it she's actually trying to help the club make money <laughs> she's actually trying to help these fucking old you know stuck in their way fucking guys make some money line their fucking pockets and guarantee that their kids go to fucking private school school all fucking year round and they're fucking trying to cut her at her knees absolutely incredible you have to fucking love it and also this is proof that that whole thing that people were doing during covid about oh yeah we're going to be more inclusive diverse venues we're going to bring different voices black color white color all this sort of nonsense it was all performative because when people are put in position to actually try and make these changes or put these changes into action there's always opposition and when they don't need to do it and now there's not enough there's not much scrutiny on them there's not enough much as eyes on them the things that they were preaching and saying would change haven't changed have, haven't really changed nothing's really changed it's all the same shit again you just have to do things on your own and hope it gets better they continue negativity surrounding this one event continued and at one point i was pulled into a meeting because the staff had concerns one of which was what and i quote if the club will, <laughs> oh my god this is one of my favorite segments right this shows you how fucking stuck in the mud and backwards this the dance music scene is the nightlife scene is the negativity surrounding this one event continued. At one point, I was pulled into a meeting because the staff had quote unquote concerns, one of which was, and I quote, if the club will smell like assholes. Sometime later, the same event also made a very strong stance about Palestine conflict online, which again made it immediately subject to cancellation. So the members, the owners of this club were concerned that these flinter, queer, LGBTQ, gay rays, whatever they were putting on at this venue that were basically, at the moment, if you don't know nothing about nightlife, you should know that in most parts of like Europe, especially here in the UK, the LGBTQ flinter queer scene is the one that's the most popping. They've come and taken nightlife back by the fucking scruff of the fucking neck. They fucking got a hold on most of the best parties. They've got the best vibes. They've got the best DJs, the best fucking fucking times you're going to have at these events unfortunately if you don't like it it's up to you but that's the fact of the matter they are running shit at the moment so because they're running shit at the moment everybody's basically opened their doors to them because they're the ones that have the most captive audience they act they're fucking very enthusiastic very engaged they buy tickets early they attend the events all glammed up to the nines they make for good pictures make for good content make for good vibes all this malarkey is fucking brilliant right it's what you'd imagine the dream would be for any club manager or club owner to have this club full of like diverse people from all walks of life all fucking you know sexual orientations all fucking beliefs whatever may be raving under your roof fucking perfecto fucking perfecto fucking perfecto but with it comes a lot of very politically charged and active and socially aware people too who are maybe going to say things that you're probably not going to agree with because you know most of these people are like you know usually on the wrong side of history especially the owners of the club so these same people are putting on good nights but they're also saying free fucking palestine free fucking palestine until the fucking death and if you're somebody that owns these type of clubs who maybe has some leanings to israel you're not going to take it too well and you're going to cancel the event so it's a weird situation to be in at the moment um especially for the people that are putting on these parties because they're having to fight against this war all right it's constant war because these guys unfortunately run they run the parties but the people that actually are in charge of the the, the main bits of infrastructure right they're the kind of deciding factors in places they're not going to go anywhere anytime soon because they refuse to leave as well by the way these 60 year old fucking club managers are like get out of the way bro anyway let's continue I had approached the bosses of the first time seeking some support and leadership for the force to work together one direction and while they seemed to listen they did absolutely nothing I was trying to be the bigger person and reach out to the other booker directly again to tell him I'm here and willing to work together as a team unfortunately since these talks the exclusionary behavior and bullying just became worse yeah exactly that's what it is it's exclusionary and bullying it's definitely bullying 100% what they're doing to it definitely I forgot that word definitely bullying he continued to fill the calendar without involving me often booking himself on lineups 
where he clearly didn't fit. <laughs> That's what I need to do. I, I think I was talking to um, I think I was talking to Becky Strook about this on on the DMs before a few weeks ago. Um, big up Becky Strook, big up fucking Hotbox, right? And I was telling them that like I remember when I used to put on parties. That was one of the things I did all the time when I used to put on raves. I'd always put myself on the lineup, but oh, mostly just opening opening fucking slots it was nothing crazy i would never give myself like a peak time set unless it was warranted of course but most of the time we'd be at like the graveyard shift so it'd be like from nine to fucking 12 which if you know anywhere about you know any nightlife place you're in metropolitan city in the western hemisphere you know that no one comes out to a nightclub before nine o'clock so i'd be there at the clubs right playing at fucking 9 p.m 9 p.m on my own playing random shit <laughs> but it was good because i got to learn how to dj because literally no one was there but that's what i did and i remember becky strick telling me yeah i did that too so i thought oh shit what this is not unique like she also that she's like a you know she got one of the most popular and most fucking well-revered parties in london and she's also you know putting on these parties obviously to service her community but also hey if i can book myself <laughs> so imagine you, you 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 work for a club like watergate and you're booking yourself that's that's beyond Imagine, I felt guilty about booking myself playing at fucking Alibi or playing at the Old Blue Last or playing at fucking, I don't know, um, Mixed Garage back in the day. This guy is a booker at Watergate and he's booking himself. That is, that's a that's a sackable offence, man. Especially if you're shit. Most likely he is shit, I'd imagine as well, with this type of attitude, right? Um, he continued to book himself even when he didn't fit. Of course, what else? I propose to have a special women's... Oh my God, did he book himself the Women's Day? I propose we have a special Women's Day event, but this was dismissed as not being important. Then... <laughs> <laughs> these people are pieces of shit then this male DJ later had to cancel the date was now free so I was quite excited about putting together an all flinter lineup as I'd done in the previous year in another club and it was very successful however I was not allowed to be involved at all imagine how it felt being the only female booker at the club and I was not allowed to be involved in the world's women day event exactly instead the event was put together by a straight cis man the fact that I'm a woman more experienced or how successful my previous events were did not matter and I love that she said this I love that she said i'm a woman so i should have got to do that event but i'm also more successful in previous events and i had the experience like let me do the job because that i think is a main part which i love about this current crop of parties it's not like they're just doing it for representation's sake which is important because we've all been bored and tired of the same fucking faces playing in the same fucking raves again and again i think i've actually got a picture here that way to show you where is it again i love all these people playing apart from jimmy jules but this is kind of the the kind of how it usually was when you went to raves right kind of you know this general like straight guys that would be playing i don't know i guess most of them are mixed two of them or three of them are mixed race and two white guys basically crystal here claire dixon and me and seth troxler this is how it used to look right and these other people that are putting on these other events are purposely pushing other types of djs other types of you know people to play these events just to kind of mix things up again but they're not just doing it for the sake of representation and inclusion they're doing them because they're also fucking killer dj so i love the fact that she's saying hey even though i'm a woman i should be involved in women's day events of course it's also because i actually do the job which is the most important part these people are coming in they're putting on these great events like how like fucking inferno all these type of events they can clearly say yes we're inclusive yes we're diverse yes we're fucking very much in the times and in the zeitgeist but we could also say we've got the stats to prove it that we move fucking tickets we fill out fucking venues we have great reviews blah 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 it's all there in black and white too so if you want us for the vibes if you want us to fucking tick your fucking box and make you feel good about what you're doing for society cool but when it comes to just the bare bones numbers and you know putting up those numbers and you know and looking up at the scoreboard we're also doing that as well so big up her for referencing that next slide on another day another male dj cancelled and i saw an opportunity to drive for the change of the plan so with a bike pock event which had a very extremely successful in the past sorry which has been extremely successful in the past this i guess i'm kind of bipoc isn't it? am i bipoc Maybe I'm kind of BIPOC. Who knows? Am I BIPOC or am I just POC? Who knows? Um, despite the fact artists had been confirmed for the party was later cancelled and the male booker gave the reason directly to the promoter saying, oh my God, I didn't see this bit. Said that they were too urban. This is the issue that I have with techno, with dance music and the club scene in general. I think I have this weird issue where like, for me personally, again, I don't really like to get behind flags and you know whatever movements and put my fist up in here like i'm a black panther and stuff it's not that serious but i do find it a little bit annoying how despite there being this collective kind of responsibility or collective push to promote and push like flinter voices and bipoc voices it's mostly done to push people who aren't 
you know, cis presenting in that regard, right? Or male. It's mostly done anyone but male that kind of flies under the BIPOC banner, we're going to push. But then I would say that I'm also not somebody that could be put in a male thing because no matter what party I go to, especially techno events, like you're always kind of being questioned about your in reasoning of being there, especially if you're not like in the club, if you're not like part of a cool, you know, group of people and shit. Because I usually go to these events by myself. I don't really talk about this stuff on social media unless I'm doing it on the podcast. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a thing I just enjoy like going to a gig. So I'm not like actively involved in the scene, but I am kind of in the scene, if you get what I mean. It's a bit of a weird thing. I like to do my own thing. But because I just turn up at these events just because I like to go there, you always kind of looked at a bit like, do you know what's really going on? It's like, of course I do. Why would I'd be at this random warehouse rave in the middle of fucking Hacky Week if I didn't know what it was about. But you're getting questioned because of the colour of your skin and obviously your fucking gender. So people are looking at you like, oh, you're a black dude and you're a male. Like, what are you doing here? So even though I should be kind of in a safe space there, I'm not. But then I'm also seen as too urban when I'm not, you know, because I wouldn't describe myself as too urban. I know what they mean by too urban because they just don't, they, they don't want like overtly stereotypical black people at their events for some reason, which is odd, because I'd still say the most people that cause the most trouble at these events are people that look at themselves, right? It's not really even the fucking too urban people. So this idea that they're saying the too urban people are going to be the issue is fucking hilarious, especially if you've been to Watergate. You know, the majority of people that actually cause a, more, the most trouble on there, you know, are what people refer to as sun dodgers online. But again, what do I know? I also moved over um, on all. So I was also moved over on all the female queer BIPOC parties, which I'd worked on before. This party became the source of ridicule for the other booker, constantly making fun of them and their musical style. Despite having one very successful event at the club, this party also coincided because they replaced with a male DJ headlining the event. So they basically don't want any blacks, don't want any queers, any gays any nothing they just want the same that's why Watergate is the way it is isn't it so they purposely are pushing against this you know what's the thing called modernization or of like dance music and nightlife in general they don't want to be part of this new movement they just want to leave it and be as the same as it was before minimal until the end trance until the end well not trance trance is kind of trendy but i guess i get it i get it cool obviously i knew something was very wrong wrong here um after being bullied for weeks, I was close to giving up and somehow accepted this would be how it is here. The bosses weren't helping at all. Um, I'd already started to feel super worthless and question why I'm here, how I got myself in a situation and that allows myself to feel like this. Although I saw myself as a strong woman, at this point, I did not feel like a strong woman anymore. I've been beaten down over a number of weeks. I would come home from work depressed and wake up not wanting to go to work. In the morning, it was touched the work environment and there was no signs of it improving. It was also quite embarrassed about some of the events around the club side so to put out that I had no involvement in as it was quite opposite of what I came here for. I felt an incredible amount of guilt. I had promised all the agents and DJs and promoters that the club was changing and brought all these new, young, diverse audiences with the promises that the safe space while I couldn't even keep myself safe here. I questioned whether I was a part of it, of the lie. Shit, deep. I wonder if she was part of the people that got multi-sex to go to Watergate. Of Watergate, of most has always been at Watergate. I wonder. But yeah, that's what can happen when you're at a workplace when you don't feel like you've been, you know, seen. You feel like you've been bullied and harassed. And I think there's nothing worse than being at a workplace that you're not enjoying your time there because you spend probably more time per week at work than you do probably with your friends and shit. So if you can't enjoy yourself at work, you probably need to go somewhere else very, very soon. And again, it's not about enjoying yourself, like finding your passion and shit. It's just not wanting to like, the, the feeling that you get when you don't want to go to work is probably a sign that you shouldn't be at the job that you're at. You probably should move sooner rather than later. As it happened on World Women's Day, I received another job offer. I was miserable at this point. I just wanted to take it and leave the situation behind. But at the same time, I didn't want to leave and give up. I love my job, but I wanted to escape the environment. My partner convinced me that I should try to talk to the boss's owners and tell them what really was going on with this whole time explain how i was feeling and hope to find a resolution and seeking support that's a bad move man it never works out that way it never <laughs> works out i'll guarantee that will never whatever you feel you should probably go by your gut and just move with it this whole clearing the air shit never works out in workplaces for me anyway m maybe my own experience is it but i feel like these uh, if you feel a certain way about your workplace very rarely you're speaking out about it it's going to sort it out you have to suck it up and just kind of ignore it and do your job and collect your paycheck or find another job but talking about it in the open with people doesn't do anything in my personal opinion we agreed to meet during which i explained all that was been going on one of the bosses remained silent unable to talk the other one responded by telling me to leave they fired me 
See what I mean about this? <laughs> they fired me. He said, it's better for me to go. Oh my God. There was no empathy, no willingness to find a solution or understand. He even started to point the finger at me for not integrating to the team and standing outside with the boys smoking or coming to the club alone on weekends to the old men parties that the club is known for. Firstly, I don't smoke. Secondly, this is a justification that of what went on there. Is there a crime that I hang out with the boys while talking with girls they've slept with? You know what, though? This is, this is actually one of the unfortunate parts. This is actually one of the most unfortunate parts about working. And I think I've realised it the longer that I've been in the working environment. Working, unfortunately, is very rarely about how good you are at a job. It is mostly about how well you integrate with the team that you're in or with the company that you're in or maybe the team that you're in when you're working there at the fucking company. It's very rarely about how good you are at a job. That's why there are so many personality hires in most workplaces that are just there for the good vibes. They're just there because they always say yes to drinks on Wednesdays. They always, you know, they always say, they, they always say yes to quickly nipping out for a cigarette. They're always down for a fucking gossip or a chat on Slack or Teams and shit. That's what it's actually about. It's not really about how good you are at a job. That's why sometimes I think it's actually more embarrassing nowadays to get fired from jobs because it really does only require you to kind of play the game of like going to a couple of events after work going to a couple of birthday parties hanging out after work to have some drinks at the desk and shit you know that's what it only requires but unfortunately in this regard natalie had every right not to be alone with these people because they made her feel uncomfortable because as a woman it's completely different especially being the only woman that's full-time working in an office full of lads who openly talk about fucking everybody they've worked with at work you know it's a different type of environment because you feel like they're almost because it feels like they're negatively reacting to her because she's making it very clear that she only wants to work and go home she wants to work improve the club make it a, a destination place to go to again you know do her job and go home but they don't want that they want her to be fully involved with everything that goes around them but she's like look i'm here to kind of give you a bit of my juice a bit of my sauce for lack of a better term but i'm not here to kind of give my all to a club because i've got my own life i've got my own scene my own community that i'm with cool but they didn't like that so that's probably why she got fired in that regard but this is incredible isn't it you want to clear the air you want to resolution they're like no get get out fuck off it's like jesus christ of all the outcomes i expected from this meeting this was not one of them i was completely shocked and speechless i came to them and told them i was being bullied and isolated for months in their club and this is their response he also made a point to tell me the person who had been bullying me would not be fired this is something i never asked for but he made sure to make it clear Oof. he also said i noticed you were feeling bad and i thought to myself you just let it continue Bearing in mind I'm a new girl in a club full of mostly straight men and you sit in the same office as me and don't think to take me to one side and ask me how I'm doing. As he left, he told me that he never parted ways with anyone on a bad note before and that he knows everyone in the city. I'm not sure if this was a threat, but that's what it said and it just added it to my anxiety. Yeah, that is definitely a threat. That's 100% a threat. That's definitely a fair feeling. Left. Again, these are the type of things where I think all men, all red-blooded straight men should have a list of things in their little book that they're willing to go to prison for they're willing to sit down in jail for they're willing to get handcuffed for they're willing to do some time for and i think one thing that i've got in my book of things that i'm willing to do some time for is obviously alongside of somebody physically harming my family in terms of my brothers my mom and dad and shit would be somebody touching my partner or saying something or making them feel away especially if it's a dude like I'm willing to do some time. Like I'm, I'm even close to saying to admitting in real life. Like I'm willing to do some time for fucking physically ab assaulting a woman if she touched my 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 lady or my partner, my wife. That's how much. That's how far I'd go. I think all men should have that in a list of like, hey, if this happened, if my woman came back home and said this, I'm willing to fucking put on a fucking banner clava, take my bat and go to the office and just start spanking people until you know there's fucking you know this fucking cherry juice all over the fucking roof that's what i'm willing to do like invincible style honestly because this is absolutely crazy bro imagine someone doing this to your missus and she's coming back crying every fucking night and you have to deal with all this stuff and you're feeling fucking you know useless and shit fuck me anyway i felt like i'd gave them everything i had and now that i asked for something back which is the tiniest amount of support the only solution they come up with is to throw me out i felt like i was used and then they throw me away like some piece of garbage you dispose of and never think again since the meeting, despite being promised that they would, you know what's really even, you know what's really sad about this, by the way. How cruel is this for Michael Reed? She's at this place. She's getting bullied. They're harassing her. They're making her feel uncomfortable. Sexual harassment, bullying, blah 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 blah. In the midst of all of this, she gets offered another job somewhere else. But because she's so, inf what do you think? I guess because she's so, she feels like 
she can't give up and she feels like a calling to do whatever she feels like she wants to stay and prove it wrong and try and turn it around she then tries to have a clear the air talk and they fire her so did she get that job back <laughs> do you know how cruel that world is that you get another job you turn it down you stay the place you are you want to make it work and then they fire you anyway ain't that a fucking bitch since the meeting despite being promised they would get in touch with me no one spoke to me or for around a week and the person who contacted me was a Mel Booker just to ask for a handover yo that that Mel Booker guy was the he's the enemy of progress that 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 Mel Booker is the enemy of progress he's the real fucking sleeper agent that guy because he if it, he I'm I'm standing on it unless it comes out that he's fucking gay or something I'm standing on the fact that he's the one I wanted to fuck first he brought her in to kind of get her under his farm and to have her owe him a favor whatever it may be however dumb that is she turned down these advances or made it very clear she didn't want anything to do with them and then he completely turned 180 on her and it went to shit but that initial guy was though he's the real one he des he's the one you deserve to kind of get to get run over in a fucking fatal 500 in my opinion I had all my accounts and access deleted with no warning or discussion, even though I had still officially supposed to be employed for another month. All my emails were redirected and answered by one person that had bullied me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I had no chance of finishing any of the open projects I was working with and I'd been bullied and fired and he's a bully and he's a bully and benefits from it, backed up by the bosses. When I first started working at the club, I remembered a PSC employee there who had just been fired or let go. I was told that he was a drug-induced psychosis. After what happened to me, I looked, took some legal advice. One of the things the lawyer mentioned was that the calculated actions of the bosses sound as though it was something that they had done before. So I reached out to this person. He told me he had been racially abused there for over years and upon approaching his bosses was not given any support or protection and was eventually forced out of the club. He was outraged at being painted as mentally unstable. Hearing this and the similarities to what I experienced, it really, mat it really made my understand, sorry, that this is not just about me or him it's about them they don't care about diversi diversifying their team they don't value female voices they don't uphold white they uphold white cis hetero male patriarchy and that reflects your audience they attract i hope this goes to show you the insight into what it's like working behind the scenes as a young woman pushing for inclusivity diversity and acceptance in the berlin club scene which is weird isn't it i think what she said that is really informative and really powerful at the end this is the Berlin club scene. This is the scene that we all hold up on the fucking pedestal. We all say it's the best scene. It's the most inclusive. It's the most diverse, most diverse, blah, blah, blah. But really behind the scenes, it's the same all around the world, especially in the Western, in Western world, especially here in the UK. People in the UK, myself included, sometimes can lord and suck up and lick up and suck the fucking dick of Berlin too much. But really, they're not that great. They have great clubs. They have amazing infrastructure in terms of being able to open long hours and shit. They take their job very seriously. That helps the club to be really good. And they have a high concentration of very talented people, artists, DJs, all working and all living and working in one fucking city. Cool. But really and truly, behind the scenes, the same issues that we're having in the UK, they're having over there. Sexual harassment, abuse, drugs, um, bullying, um discrimination blah blah it's all happening the same sort of thing it's just that maybe over there it's a bit more maybe over there it's a bit more like hush hush because the scene is so important it's such a part of their infrastructure there it's such a major part of their fucking economy and everyone wants to be a part of it that no one's willing to kind of step up and say something because they don't want to risk potentially harming their career whereas in london i feel like because everything is so shit here you don't really need to ask permission you don't really need to be a part of the scene it's actually not cool to be a part of the scene to be honest here in london i think maybe in berlin it's a bit more cool to be a part of the establishment here it's not so much because the establishment is what fabric like e e1 what fucking egg do you know what I mean like what's the establishment do you know what I mean that's th th those aren't great places so you kind of are forced to do your own thing because there's not the infrastructure set up to help you but then because of that when you do your own thing you do your own thing you have your own crowd you have your own way of doing things like as we've seen with the whole queer lgbt queer, um, gay scene that's popping up here in london they're completely doing their own thing their own way on their own terms and it's fucking working really well and now all those you know normal functions of the fucking scene or people are now reaching out to them and hoping they can come and give them some source right that's actually how it's fucking going so it's kind of nice to see that all these things are fucking changing in real fucking time right so big up everybody there um but yeah, sad situation all around. I wish it could have been a better situation, but I think what this shows well in conclusion is this. I feel like this is a classic indication that things are finally starting to get to a good place now. I feel like we're in a situation now where the scene 
is starting to kind of I would say fix itself but I feel like when these type of things happen these are usually indications that the next phase is going to be great because it means that the 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 establishment is sort of like crumbling under the pressure of all these new people coming in wanting demanding more and doing her own thing speaking power you know um speaking act speaking power into things and kind of trying to disrupt the kind of status quo and because of that eventually things are going to change and we're going to have new faces kind of being in charge but i feel like personally for me there should be less trying to be involved in the establishment and more doing your own thing fuck these motherfuckers you know what I mean? Fuck trying to fix Watergate, make your own Watergate and make it in the image of what you're trying to represent and who you're trying to push forward and the voices that you're trying to put on and the message you're trying to send to the world. Because I've always said, and again, this is a very soppy, gay, annoying, lame, idiotic, um, naive thing to say, almost Lex Friedman-like. But I've always thought as like club world, dance music, the nightlife as being like our attempt at utopia our attempt at designing and constructing our own utopia for like those brief hours for those eight hours 12 hours 16 hours we get a chance to take away all the differences that we have all the things that kind of make us pit, pit, pit yourself against each other all the things that make us feel like we're others and we're different and shit we pull our differences to one side and we all kind of get underneath that roof and we rave and go fucking crazy and connect to this amazing music that we all kind of love from all walks of life so if that's the case that's what should always be the modus operandi the main fucking focal point that we're all trying to aim towards so why not try to do that now it's it's again it's hard to do so it's not going to be easy but why don't we give, give it a go because all these old motherfuckers that's what it originally if you look at the original origin if you look at the origins of ibifa and how that was set up and stuff you'll see a lot of like very um noble almost altruistic almost kind of like you know um again kind of trying to recreate your own uh, utopia type of vision over there until obviously it got corrupted by all the money and the greed and shit but there was some people in there trying to do some great things and people probably they're trying to do some great things to this day so i think that's possible to do so nowadays especially with the infrastructure that we have especially with the so especially with the options and the tools you have available to you nowadays you don't really need permission from the establishment anymore you can kind of do your own thing and i feel like now is the time to do so so more power to natalie Patik. um obviously the story is fucking heartbreaking and obviously really really horrible but again it's good to know that at least you know it's good to know that berlin isn't as perfect as it seems as on the outside especially as a quote-unquote tourist as i as as i am when i go there every other month and stuff i love the fucking place but it's good to know that they do have their own issues similar to what we have here and that in general you just have to create your own thing there is no like you know there is no like perfect situation where the industry is going to make it easier for you to kind of do whatever you want to do you kind of just have to figure out your own way but unfortunately that is the long way and it kind of takes a lot more work to do it so big up Natalie Peck for fucking blowing that up there hopefully a resolution gets found out soon hopefully she lands on her feet and she's okay and it goes on and becomes absolutely amazing so big up Natalie Petit big up Natalie Petit